Hello. Hello. Um, this is, how many times have you been in Japan? You've had such a long career. Well, it's, I think this is only my third time. It's still only your third time? Oh, I toured here in around 80, 81 with the specials. And then I came back here last year. Um, I did an acoustic thing with Dave Stewart. We supported um, Bob Dylan almost a year ago. And this is like the third time. How's your life? Uh, okay when I'm not, but it's sort of weird this time because I've been in bed ill for five days. Uh, and then the car came and I got out of bed onto an aeroplane and I'm here now. And it, it feels more like Mars than Japan. <laughs> so you're still kind of a bit sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Uh, laugh, your second solo album. Yeah. Uh, in 20 years you've only done two solo albums, right? Yeah, it's, I think it's my 11th album, but uh, only two solo. Uh, and, and, you know, I enjoyed being in bands when I was like a teenager and stuff, but you now I'm 39 and I'm, I, can't, I find it hard to tolerate being in bands. Uh, I find it hard to um, understand the motivations of drummers sometimes and stuff. Uh, it's like, I, I don't know, if, if, uh, if, uh, I, don't wanna, I don't want people to make mistakes on my behalf or uh, on my mistakes. Uh, you just reach a certain point where you need to just sort of control it. Is it, is uh, getting a solo album now sort of like uh, a totally different thing from yeah. bands? So, well for me massively because uh, um, even if you work as a, as a duo, you get 50% input from somebody else but I, I need to control everything sort of lyrically because I can only talk about what I feel, really, and I can't expect anybody else to feel the same way as me. And you're sort of making compromise because you, know, you just like you've got an opinion about something, and to have to get that opinion through the group first is just sort of weird. It's sort of, you know you've got a voice and you want to make records, and you don't really want to, want to make any compromises on the way. Um, laugh. Uh, the the album title is you know kind of cheery. And then when I first heard the album, it was, it was like really uplifting, kind of, it was kind of up-tempo kind yeah. of thing. But as I listened to it, there was like, you know, like in the vocal melodies, there's a lot of melancholy. And as you listen to it, it gradually, you know, you can sort of feel some kind of like sad kind of thing in it. I mean, that always comes through, you know, which, which I'm sort of, sort of pleased about. I don't like good reference points for me are people like Leonard Cohen. Do people find people just label as this sort of a miserable artist? I find him really fascinating and really yeah. funny, really yeah. funny. And it's like his lyrics are incredibly funny, but you've got to delve a bit deeper. I mean, never judge a book by its cover, really. Yeah. I mean, that was the idea of the cover of Laugh, me laughing for the first time ever on record with a title like Laugh, but the, the song's been about a divorce. Yeah. Um, what, for the first album that you did, you had a lot of guest members come on, like uh, ex members from XDC, members from The yeah. Smiths. And then for this album as well, you have uh, you co-write with uh, Stephen Duffy yeah. um, uh, Damon from Blur. Yeah. Um, how's that all come about? Um, well, I don't sort of like look for people to write with them. It's just people who become friends. Because we're friends and we, we go out and we talk, we often talk about writing songs. And I don't know, it's like if, if two bus drivers went out and come to a time and bus and then want to drive a bus for the weekend or something, kind of competition. And we sort of do that. And it just sort of naturally happens. It's like I've just been working with Damien again for my new album, which um, I don't know when I'm going to record it. But it's only because we're sort of friends and it's sort of what we do really. Do you think? Uh, you and him are going to be more uh, seeing each other more from now on after you've done this, or was it just a working? Thing? Um, well, it's sort of just a working thing, but it's like I don't know. It's, it's a very small community, really, and you bump into each other a lot. Right. You know, you only have to go to w one place a week, and you can bump into half the music business. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like that. Um, we're going to look at a video, uh, Ballad of a Landlord. Just, um, yeah. could you explain what, what it's all about? This song was sort of uh, written about, I, I, I went through a sort of separation room with my wife and I came back from somewhere and to find out that she'd sold the house and it was really weird and it was like, I just felt like a landlord and it was almost like, well, maybe could, could 
you know, I've just asked for my permission or something. And I just felt like a landlord, whereas before I felt like a husband and a father. I felt like a landlord. And it sort of details how I felt. How I felt like returning to a sea, which I thought was home, but all of a sudden it's very alien. Right. Um, is, that's in the video. Um, yeah, I mean, well, we went to Los Angeles to, to, to do the video because we, w we wanted a motel full of different characters, of, like trying to reflect them in, in the song. And, and, but and no doubt we're in it too, which was weird because it had nothing to do with the song. Uh, but that was the you, story. Do you come up with the ideas for the videos, or is it more of a, uh, a thing with the director? It, it's Well, it definitely was a thing with the director on this one because we started dating afterwards. So, so you know. <laughs> It got to be a thing, really. But I don't know, I, I just look at people's work and I can sort of tell straight away whether I'd be into them really doing it. And then, then we'd sort of sit down and work it out together. Okay, well, let's have a look at it. Okay.
Can I get you any drinks, gentlemen? Yeah, I'd like some mineral water, please. Did you think where the toilets are? bands mm. uh, but it's always they've always been kind of different and they've always kind of gone with the scene at, at the time like um, specials was kind of Jamaican and then it kind of moved into more poppy well, I don't know and, how to explain yeah, it and, and it's like we formed the specials in I think 77 and at that, I mean it's like I, I lived in quite a large West Indian community and um, it's sort of a natural thing that music I'd, I'd grown up with and um, but I, I also find it important to experiment but to really experiment I mean a, a lot of people make maybe 10 albums and really don't experiment they might add a string section on the third one I don't think I don't know, why do that why do that I'd much rather split a band up and start again and it's like when you do that the, the, there no, the, there's nothing before you. You can do anything you want. You can be a salsa band. You can do a, a, anything you want. But that's the appeal. I mean, that is why I, I formed a band when I was 17. And I never want to let that slip. You know, that, that's the motivation for doing it. It's ignorance of what you're going to do next. I think it's quite healthy. You know? um, whenever you kind of changed direction, or um, have you always? Has that been a natural change, or has that been kind of looking around you, looking at the scene and saying, 
well, this will kind of, uh, this kind of fits into what everyone's saying. Mostly natural. There's only ever been one change where I just listened to everybody and they said, you should change to be this. And that was a band called The Colour Field on our second album. And our first album was getting played in America. So they said, you should make an American radio album. And I didn't know what that was. And I know nothing about American radio. So we went to do it in New York and it's pretty much disastrous. But it was good to do it because I so from that point I've never listened to anyone else. And it's like you, you just gotta feel with what you know. Yeah. You know it's like you know, that's what I do. Um, so looking back, did, which band was for you the most um, satisfying? Or which band were you happy in most? Elements of, of each band have been really satisfying. The specials were good. That was a good live band. I enjoyed playing live at that point, but after that, and not so much. Um, but at the moment, I like the control and the freedom I get in the studio because I can just sort of call anyone and say, "Would you play my record?" Yeah. Um, that is fantastic, really. Without, it's like Graham who plays guitar with Blur. And it's like I want him to play my record. I don't have to consult another guitarist to see if it's okay. He just comes and plays, and I get exactly what I want. And so I'm happy to, uh, at this point, really. Right. Um, so when you can call other musicians and for them to come, um, for them to just come is probably because, well, I know that a lot of musicians respect you. Um, how does that? How, how do you feel like having a lot of young artists really like look up to you? I think it's. I, 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 I think it's important. I think it's important to bless some sort of mark, and that's really all I ever wanted to do. The way. The Beatles did. I mean, they left an important stamp there, and what you do is you pick that up and you, you alter it. And it's progression and it's British popular music, and it's important. And it's important that Blur cite me as you know, a, a reference, really. It's important because I think Blur are good. I think if, if a band I consider awful does it, mm -hmm. I tend to uh, ignore it, really. <laughs> I wish they hadn't said it. Something, I don't know. Um, is there any young bands that you draw experience from, or is it to the point now where you pretty much have your own thing sussed and you can... No, I, I mean, I, I do that all the time, I and mean, it's what keeps me fresh. It's like, I have this sort of relationship with Blur, which is quite a, a funny one, but I saw them at Christmas in, in London, and they were just so really fantastic. They were like Nirvana or something, it's like they were really fantastic. And they've completely altered since part life back to this being pixies or, or you know sonic youth or something live they were fantastic and you know i just think oh well they just wore t-shirts and it's like just cool it's just really good okay well thanks a lot for coming down thanks. and i hope you have a bit <laughs> I, I will be i will be soon i promise thank you